The modern crime drama has evolved from a rich history of predecessors with a particular debt to the 1980s sensation, Magnum P.I. With an impressive eight-year reign on television and an acclaimed opening theme, Magnum P.I. left an indelible mark on its genre, even inspiring a recent revival with Jay Hernandez donning the iconic role. Yet beyond its picturesque Hawaiian backdrop, and Magnum's signature fashion ensemble of a Hawaiian shirt and baseball cap, it was the talented cast that truly made Magnum P.I. stand out. More than three decades have passed since the final episode aired, but the legacy of the actors who captivated millions with their engaging portrayal of a thrilling crime series lives on. Let's revisit the journeys of the leading man and the supporting cast who brought Magnum P.I. to life. John Hillerman as Jonathan Quayle Higgins. Jonathan Quayle Higgins III is a close friend of Thomas Magnum and a former British Army Regimental Sergeant Major with an impressive 37-year military career. He served extensively during World War II in North Africa, Italy, and Southeast Asia. Hillerman made his film debut with an uncredited role as a reporter in They Call Me Mr. Tibbs, 1970, and Peter Bogdanovich, who had previously worked with Hillerman, cast him in The Last Picture Show and Paper Moon. Throughout the 1970s, Hillerman had steady roles in both film and television, including notable supporting parts in Chinatown and Blazing Saddles, 1974. In 1975, he co-starred in Ellery Queen as Simon Brimmer, a radio detective. From 1976 to 1980, he appeared regularly as Mr. Connors on One Day at a Time and played Betty White's estranged husband on The Betty White Show, 1977-1978. In 1982, Hillerman took on the role of Fritz the Monocle, a German villain, in the television pilot Tales of the Gold Monkey. He also hosted the 1984 puzzle video Money Hunt, The Mystery of the Missing Link, directed by David Hemmings. In 1990, Hillerman played Lloyd Hogan in the sixth and final season of The Hogan Family and portrayed Dr. Watson opposite Edward Woodward's Sherlock Holmes in Hands of a Murderer. Hillerman appeared in Berlin Break, 1993, for one season, where he played Mac McKenzie, a former spy and the owner of Mac's, a bar in West Berlin considered neutral during the Cold War. Mac collaborated with two unemployed spies, Valentin Renko, Nicholas Clay, a former KGB agent, and Willie Richter, Kai Wolf, an ex-BND operative. This role reunited him with Jeff McKay, who had played Mac McReynolds in Magnum P.I. After retiring from acting in 1999, Hillerman returned to Texas. He passed away from cardiovascular disease on November 9, 2017, at his home in Houston, at the age of 84. Larry Manetti as Orville Rick Wright. Orville Rick Wright is a longtime friend of Thomas Magnum, dating back to their days in the Vietnam War. He manages the King Kamehameha Club, a private beachfront establishment in southeast Oahu. Rick is a smooth, street-smart, and industrious figure of modest height who is well-known around town for his role in running the club. Manetti began his film career at the age of seven with a small part in The Harder They Fall, 1956, and trained as an actor with the Ted List Players in Chicago. His first television role came as a young detective in Jack Webb's Chase, 1973 and 1974. He later portrayed pilot Bobby Boyle in Ba Ba Black Sheep, 1976-1978, alongside Robert Conrad. Manetti also appeared as a bookie in the short-lived NBC series The Duke, 1979, which starred Conrad in the lead role. Throughout his career, he has appeared in 25 feature films and made guest appearances on numerous TV shows, including The Rockford Files, Emergency, Starsky and Hutch, Ten Speed and Brown Shoe, Fantasy Island, Battlestar Galactica, Renegade, Quantum Leap, Jag, and Walker, Texas Ranger. He also had a small role in the 1993 film CIA 2, Target Alexa. Since July 2011, Larry and Nancy Minetti have hosted a weekly radio show on CRN Digital Talk Radio Networks 
On January 24, 2013, it was announced that Minetti would join CBS's reboot of Hawaii 5-0 in a recurring role as Nikki the Kid DeMarco, described as a local lounge legend who was once mentored by Frank Sinatra. In October 2019, Manetti reprised the same role in the reboot of Magnum P.I. and also reunited with Tom Selleck on Blue Bloods as the troubled retired police sergeant Sam Vellucci. Manetti is the author of the semi-autobiographical book Aloha Magnum, which reflects on his experiences from Magnum P.I. and shares stories about cast members and celebrities like Frank Sinatra, Elvis Presley, and Michelle Pfeiffer. He previously hosted a celebrity brunch and once owned a restaurant in the Plaza Hotel and Casino, which was managed by his friend D.W. Barrick of Barrick Gaming Corporation. Roger E. Mosley as Theodore T.C. Calvin Theodore T.C. Calvin is a former Marine and helicopter pilot who now offers helicopter tours in Hawaii. As a member of Magnum's team, he is portrayed by actor Stephen Hill. T.C. is one of Magnum's devoted friends, having formed strong bonds with them as POWs in Afghanistan. In a special return to the series, Mosley appeared in the Magnum P.I. reboot episode A Kiss Before Dying on March 11, 2019, playing Bookie, T.C.'s barber. Stephen Hill, who plays T.C. in the reboot, remarked, it is truly an honor for us to welcome an original cast member of Magnum P.I., someone who portrayed T.C. with such thoughtful and dignified talent. Mosley made guest appearances on various shows such as Night Court, Kung Fu, Starsky and Hutch, Kojak, The Rockford Files, Beretta, and Sanford and Son. He also featured in Roots, The Next Generations. In the 1973 film The Mac, he made a notable appearance as the militant brother of the protagonist, Goldie. Mosley was also part of the black exploitation film genre with roles in Hitman, 1972, Hell Up in Harlem, 1973, and The River Niger, 1976. His other film credits include MCQ, 1974, with John Wayne, The Greatest, 1977, as Sonny Liston, Semi Tough, 1977, Heart Condition, 1990, and Pentathlon, 1994. On television, he starred in a recurring role as Coach Ricketts on Hangin' with Mr. Cooper, 1992-1993, alongside comedian Mark Curry, and appeared in A Thin Line Between Love and Hate, 1996, with Martin Lawrence, Lynn Whitfield, and Bobby Brown. Mosley also made celebrity guest appearances on the $25,000 Pyramid in July 1983, July 1984, and June 1985. Mosley was married to Antoinette Laudermilk for nearly 60 years. At the 2013 Two Heli Expo in Las Vegas, a ceremony was held for the restored MD-500D helicopter, where both Mosley and fellow Magnum PI co-star Larry Minetti signed the nose of the helicopter. On August 4, 2022, Mosley was critically injured in a major car accident in Linwood, California, leaving him paralyzed from the shoulders down. He succumbed to his injuries on August 7, 2022, at Cedars Sinai Medical Center at the age of 83. Glenn Cannon as Dr. Eibold, Dr. Eibold, M.D., a.k.a. Doc Eibold, a minor recurring character who appeared in episodes whenever a physician was needed. Initially credited as script writer number one, he was known for liberally prescribing opiates for any ailment. He appeared sporadically from seasons two to eight. Cannon also portrayed Dr. Bernard Kessler in episode 1.7, Never Again, Never Again. With a career spanning decades, Cannon's early roles included appearances in iconic series such as Alfred Hitchcock Presents, The Outer Limits, and Combat. He also had multiple roles on Lost and featured as a doctor on Magnum P.I. In the mid 1960s, he even taught elementary school in Los Angeles at Lanai Road School in Encino, California. Later in life, Cannon served as the president of the Hawaii chapter of the Screen Actors Guild and its subsequent organization, SAG-AFTRA. He was a dedicated educator serving as professor of theater at the University of Hawaii at Manoa and co-director of the UH Manoa Cinematic and Digital Arts Program.
Kwan He Lim as Lieutenant Yoshi Tanaka. Lieutenant Yoshi Tanaka, a homicide detective with the Honolulu Police Department, bearing a slight enigmatic quality reminiscent of Lieutenant Colombo. Known for his casual dress sense and ironic humor, he shares Magnum's enthusiasm for the Detroit Tigers. Tanaka was a recurring character throughout seasons two to eight. Portrayed by local Hawaiian actor Kwan He Lim, he often played villains in the iconic TV series Hawaii Five-0. Lim led a dual life as an attorney, practicing law from the 1950s until his retirement in the 1990s. His office was located in the Chinatown district of Honolulu. Reflecting on his typecasting as villains, Lim once remarked, I think it's the way I squint my eyes. I just look evil. Lim's acting career began serendipitously in his 40s when a casting director noticed him flirting with tourists after a surfing session. Despite his success, Lim never underwent formal acting training. Following his role on Magnum P.I., he continued to act sporadically and also served as a per diem judge for the family court system in Honolulu. Kathleen Lloyd as Carol Baldwin. Carol Baldwin. Portrayed by Kathleen Lloyd, she is an assistant district attorney on the show. Interestingly, prior to playing Carol Baldwin, Lloyd guest starred in the episode Almost Home, season three, episode 11, as Bridget Archer. Lloyd was born in Santa Clara, California, and grew up in Santa Maria as the daughter of a poultry farmer. A multi-talented individual, she pursued music and danced flamenco during her formative years. Lloyd's acting prowess earned her the Hugh O'Brien Acting Award. She is a familiar face on television, with over 80 screen appearances between 1970 and 2003, predominantly in TV series. Lloyd also held recurring roles on the Gangster Chronicles as Stella Siegel and on Hill Street Blues as Nurse Linda Wolfowitz. During the early to mid-1970s, her name fluctuated between Kathy Lloyd and Kathleen Gackle in billing credits. Lance Legault as Colonel Buck Green. The character of Colonel Buck Green, a Marine Corps aviator and intelligence officer who often served as Magnum's nemesis in seasons 2-8, was portrayed by Lance Legault. Interestingly, Legault also appeared in the season 1, episode 9 of Magnum P.I., Missing in Action playing a different character named John W. Newton, a.k.a. Delta One. Legault's acting career began with Elvis Presley movies. He appeared in Girls, 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 and Viva Las Vegas, 1964. He also performed in Presley's 1968 NBC television special, often referred to as Elvis's 68 Comeback Special, playing the tambourine and acting as a carnival barker. In addition to his screen work, Legault took on the role of Iago in the UK stage production of Jack Good's Catch My Soul, Rock Othello in 1969, and reprised the role in the 1974 Metro Media film adaptation. He found success in television, starring in both series and movies, and often portrayed military personnel, particularly officers. His most renowned television role was in the 1980s series the A-Team, where he played Colonel Roderick Decker, a United States Army colonel in pursuit of the fugitive Vietnam veterans. Legault portrayed Colonel Decker from 1983 to 1986. His final acting role was in the 2013 film Prince Avalanche, which is dedicated to his memory. Lance Legault possessed a distinctive voice, once described by Knight Rider creator Glenn A. Larson as a voice that was four octaves lower than God's. This unique trait often led to his casting as villains or tough guy characters and opened up opportunities for voiceover work. At one point, Legault's voice was even featured on self-guided tour cassettes at Elvis Presley's Graceland in Memphis, Tennessee. During the 1980s, he also lent his voice to trailer programs for ABC. From 2009 to 2010, Legault's voiceover talents were featured in Burger King commercials for the Angry Whopper Burger. He also did voiceover work for commercials for brands like Dodge and 7-Up. Lance Legault passed away from heart failure on Monday, September 10, 2012, at his home in Los Angeles.
He was 77 years old and is survived by his wife of 28 years, Teresa, and their four children, Mary, Teresa, Marcus, and William Lance, Jr. Elisha Cook, Jr. as Francis Icepick Hofstetler. Francis Icepick Hofstetler. A Chicago-based American loan shark and prominent player in the underworld, serving as a quasi-father figure to Rick Wright. In the year 1930, Cook embarked on a journey to the West, gracing the silver screen in Tinseltown's interpretation of the theatrical production, Her Unborn Child, under the directorial guidance of Albert Ray, courtesy of Windsor Picture Plays, Inc., Within the halls of 20th Century Fox, Cook carved a memorable portrayal of a bespectacled, intellectually progressive college freshman in the musical extravaganza Pigskin Parade, released in 1936, followed by his involvement in its unofficial successor, Life Begins in College, 1937. Cook's versatility shone through as he graced an array of small-screen programs from the early 1950s to the late 1980s, including an inaugural broadcast on January 16, 1954, of an Adventures of Superman episode titled Semi-Private Eye. That very year, on April 12, he graced NBC's The Dennis Day Show with his presence as a guest star. In the year 1960, he secured a role in The Hermit, an installment of the ABC comedic series The Real McCoys, sharing the screen with the esteemed Walter Brennan. As the twilight of his life approached, Cook often embodied characters defined by their dim-wittedness or cranky elderly demeanor. He portrayed a vagrant in an episode of the action-packed series The A-Team and took on the role of a senior uncle in an episode of the beloved sitcom ALF, marking one of his final forays into acting before his eventual retirement in 1988 and subsequent passing seven years later. Cook's marital history includes a union with songstress Mary Gertrude Dunkley, professionally known as Mary Lou Cook, one quarter of the celebrated vocal quartet, the Mary Max. Their marriage lasted from 1928 until their divorce decree on November 4, 1941. He found love again with Elvira Ann, Peggy McKenna, a native of Illinois, whom he wedded in 1943. Their marriage endured for a quarter of a century until their formal separation in Inyo County, California, in the second month of 1968. However, love prevailed, and they remarried on the final day of 1971, December 30th. Cook consciously avoided the glitterati of Hollywood, holding it in low esteem. His slight frame and serene disposition belied his true nature as an intrepid adventurer in the great outdoors. He established his residence in Bishop, nestled in California, yet his summers found him at Lake Sabrina within the majestic Sierra Nevada range. On May 18, 1995, Cook breathed his last at a care facility in Big Pine, California, having suffered a stroke. He was 91 years of age and stood as the final surviving member of the primary cast of the iconic film The Maltese Falcon. Eugene Roche as Luther H. Gillis. Luther H. Gillis, portrayed within the narrative realm of Magnum P.I., could be described as a mock film noir St. Louis private eye with a Boston accent. Gillis's true nature, marked by deception, dissembling, and an unnerving propensity for violence, often eludes or is underestimated by Magnum. Serving as the narrator in the five episodes spanning seasons four through eight in which he appeared, Gillis added a distinct layer of intrigue to the show. The actor behind Gillis, Eugene Roche, led a prolific career spanning various stages and screens. Hailing from his Broadway debut in 1961 as a bit player in Blood, Sweat, and Stanley Pool, alongside Darren McGavin, Roche went on to grace the Broadway stage again in Mother Courage with Anne Bancroft in 1963 and The White House with Helen Hayes in 1964. However, it was in the realm of television comedy that Roche truly shone, securing recurring roles in Soap, portraying Christine Sullivan's father on Night Court, and appearing in Webster and Perfect Strangers as Larry Appleton's abusive boss.
Roach's comedic prowess was also on full display in his portrayal of Pinky Peterson, one of Archie Bunker's buddies, in several episodes of the beloved sitcom All in the Family. Roche's versatility as an actor extended beyond comedic roles, as evidenced by his memorable performance in the 1972 film Slaughterhouse Five. Playing a prisoner of war who meets an abrupt and shocking end, Roche left a lasting impression. He continued to showcase his talent in feature films like The Late Show, 1977, Foul Play, 1978, and Corvette Summer, 1978, where he took on supporting roles. Delving into more dramatic territories, Roche demonstrated his ability to portray deceptively ordinary men with dark secrets. In Murder, she wrote, he played a corrupt cop hellbent on killing Jessica Fletcher, and in Foul Play, he embodied a criminal mastermind masquerading as a Catholic bishop. Roche's appearances in two episodes of Kojak and his role as the alien Jor Brell in the Star Trek Voyager episode, Remember, further showcased his range. On a personal note, Eugene Roche married Marjorie Perkins in 1953, and they had nine children together, including actor Eamon Roche and Emmy Award-winning writer-producer Sean Roche. The couple divorced in 1981, and Roche remarried in 1982 spending the remainder of his life with his second wife, Antoni C. Roche, née Bratman. Eugene Roche passed away on July 28, 2004, at the age of 75, in a hospital in Encino, California, due to a heart attack. Marta Dubois as Michelle Hugh. The great love of Magnum's life was Michelle, whom he married in Vietnam. However, their marriage was short-lived as Michelle, a devout Catholic, annulled the Union when her first husband, a North Vietnamese general presumed dead, reappeared. Magnum had believed Michelle died during the chaotic evacuation of Saigon in 1975, so their reunion must have been bittersweet. Dubois, the actress who portrayed Michelle, had a prolific career. She made her film debut in the 1979 drama Boulevard Nights and went on to appear in productions like Blackout. 1996. She played Rita Gam, a close friend of the future Princess Grace of Monaco, in the TV film Grace Kelly, 1983, and also starred in The Trial of the Incredible Hulk, 1989. In the year 2000, she charmed audiences in the romantic. From 2005 to 2008, Dubois took on the role of Sergeant Roberta Hansen in 10 McBride television movies. Her versatility shone through in the TV western Lone Rider, 2008, where she portrayed Dora, and in her guest role as Maria Cordero in the Law & Order Los Angeles episode Bologna Creek, 2010. Sadly, Dubois passed away unexpectedly in Los Angeles, California in 2018 at the age of 65 due to a brain aneurysm. Shavar Ross as Bryant Calvin. Bryant Calvin portrayed by Shavar Ross, joined the cast of The Cosby Show as T.C.'s son in seasons seven and eight. It all began for Shavar during his school's Christmas vacation in 1979 when he visited his father in California. There, he was spotted by the renowned children's agent, Evelyn Schultz. He quickly made his mark in the industry, landing a recurring role on the NBC hit Different Strokes as Dudley Johnson, the loyal companion of Gary Coleman's Arnold Jackson. Shavar's talent shone through as he and Gary Coleman collaborated again in the TV film Scout's Honor in 1980. Ross's versatility was on full display as he lent his voice to the beloved character of Billy Buckwheat Thomas in Hanna-Barbera's animated series The Little Rascals in 1982. He showcased his comedic timing in season two of the television show Benson, appearing in episodes 11, Big Buddy, and 17, Easy Kid Stuff. Ross also left his mark on the popular series Family Matters, portraying the memorable character of Weasel. Shavar's journey took a spiritual turn when he dedicated four years of his life to studying at the Ministry Training Institute under the guidance of Crenshaw Christian Center.
This led to the founding of the Alive Church in Los Angeles, where he served as pastor for four years. Demonstrating his entrepreneurial spirit, Shavar established Tri-7 Entertainment, Inc., in, a multifaceted company encompassing film, television, and online retail. His directorial debut, the short film Soul to Take, 2003, caught the eye of Russell Simmons, resulting in an internet distribution deal with Simmons' Lathan Media Group. In 2006, Ross shared a profound revelation on the E! Child Stars special, Geeks, Freaks, and Sidekicks, disclosing that he faced a similar trauma to his character on different strokes, experiencing inappropriate touching by a family friend while asleep. Shavar's resilience shone through as he took on roles in David Allen Greer's Chocolate News on Comedy Central in 2008 and the documentary His Name Was Jason, 30 Years of Friday the 13th in 2009. John Bruce Scott as Latare's CMDR, Maggie Poole, USN. The late Mac Reynolds's successor, she harbors a strong dislike for her superior Marine Corps Colonel Green. She graced the screens in seasons three through eight. Her claim to fame, however, lies in her portrayal of Caitlin O'Shaughnessy, a former Texas Highway Patrol helicopter pilot, in the CBS action thriller series Airwolf from 1984 to 1987. In 2007, she assumed the roles of executive director and producer for Native Voices at the Autry, a dedicated initiative fostering Native American playwrights and their stage productions. This endeavor was facilitated in partnership with the Autry National Center. Gwen Verdon as Catherine Peterson. Gwen Verdon, a luminary on the stage and screen, portrayed Catherine Peterson in the series with aplomb. In her nascent career, Verdon secured a position as the assistant to the esteemed choreographer Jack Cole, whose mastery was revered across Broadway and the Hollywood film industry. Over the course of her five-year tenure with Cole, she seized opportunities to portray vibrant characters in movie musicals, designated as a specialty dancer. Her talent extended beyond performing, as she also imparted her dance prowess to luminaries such as Jane Russell, Fernando Lamas, Lana Turner, Rita Hayworth, Betty Grable, and the iconic Marilyn Monroe, traversing various chorus lines. Verdon's momentous breakthrough arrived when choreographer Michael Kidd entrusted her with the role of the second female lead in Cole Porter's scintillating musical Can Can, 1953. Her portrayal of French prima donna Lilo in the Eve in the Garden of Eden ballet sequence was so captivating that it reportedly overshadowed the show's star, leading to demands for Verdun's role to be curtailed to merely two featured dance numbers. Expanding her repertoire, Verdun graced the set of Walker, Texas Ranger in 1997, embodying the character Maisie Whitman, a role she reprised with Panache in 1999. Her cinematic endeavors continued with the role of Alora in Walking Across Egypt, 1999, and a part in the film Bruno, released in the year 2000. The accolades bestowed upon Verdun are a testament to her artistry. She garnered a total of four Tonys, recognizing her prowess as the Best Featured Actress for Can Can, 1953, and Best Leading Actress for A Trifecta of Triumphs, Damn Yankees, 1955, New Girl in Town, 1957, and Redhead, 1959. Her accomplishments extended beyond the stage, as she also clinched a Grammy Award for the cast recording of Redhead. Verdun's legacy was further cemented with her induction into the American Theater Hall of Fame in 1981, followed by the prestigious National Medal of Arts in 1998. Beyond her artistic pursuits, Verdun was a fervent advocate for mental health care. As a proponent of self-care, she openly shared her positive experiences with mental health counseling later in life. Her commitment to the cause extended to teaching dance as therapy and serving on the board of directors for the New York Postgraduate Center for Mental Health, where she actively raised funds to advance mental health care research. Known for her eclectic interests, Verdon was an avid fan of baseball, often attending day games with her scout son. 
Her vibrant life came to a peaceful close on October 18, 2000, at the age of 75, as she passed away from a heart attack while at her daughter's home in Woodstock, Vermont. In a poignant tribute that evening, the marquee lights of Broadway dimmed at 8 p.m., honoring the legacy of the inimitable Gwen Verdon, Tom Selleck as Thomas Magnum. Magnum is a former Navy officer who has reinvented himself as a private investigator and beach bum in Hawaii. Despite having an unconventional career path, he manages to secure a comfortable role as a security expert on the estate of famed author Robin Masters. His perks include staying in the guest house on Masters' Hawaiian property, Robin's Nest, and driving a red Ferrari 308 GTS all in exchange for overseeing the estate's security, a responsibility that includes working alongside the more serious and responsible television major domo, Higgins. Selleck first appeared on The Dating Game as a college senior in 1965 and again in 1967. He soon found himself in commercials for brands like Pepsi-Cola and had roles in smaller films such as Myra Breckenridge, where he was invited by Mae West, Coma, and The Seven Minutes. His TV appearances included roles in various series, miniseries, and TV movies, alongside commercials for Salem Cigarettes and Revlon's Chaz Cologne. Selleck also appeared in commercials for Right Guard Deodorant in 1971, with Farrah Fawcett in 1972 for Dubonnet Aperitif, and in 1977 for Close Up Toothpaste. Selleck had a recurring role on the acclaimed ABC drama Boston Legal as Ivan Tiggs, the troubled ex-husband of Shirley Schmidt, played by Candace Bergen. In 2021, he made his debut album singing Yes Sir, That's My Baby with Nicholas King, recorded live in 2001 during their run of A Thousand Clowns on King's album Act One, released by Club 44 Records. On April 28, 2000, Selleck was awarded an honorary doctorate from Pepperdine University for his exemplary character and work ethic. He is a board member of the nonprofit Joseph and Edna Josephson Institute of Ethics and a co founder of the Character Counts Coalition. In 1986, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located at 6925 Hollywood BLVD. Additionally, in 1989, he was honored with the Golden Plate Award from the American Academy of Achievement. Wow, seeing the Magnum P.I. cast like this is a reality check. They gave us some great memories, though. Tell us what you think of their looks now. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this.